Welcome to the Raise Podcast. I'm Carol Barwick. We're here to raise your confidence and inspire your creativity. Each episode, we will have a different guest who will be discussing our Raise Word. The Raise Word is a word that will encourage you or empower you and at times inspire you to explore the word a little more for yourself. Well, hello everybody and welcome to our third season of The Raise podcast. We have got some fantastic guests coming up, but my first one is an absolute cracker. Um, We're going to be looking a little bit at International Women's Day, which is coming up soon. And I've got a fantastic guest that's going to help us celebrate that by talking about the word adventure. And our guest is Vanessa Ferrero. Good morning, Vanessa. How are you doing? Good morning or good afternoon to you. We're at other ends of the world. So hello, hello, raise people and and everyone. Nice to be on here. <laughs> How are you doing? Yes, yeah, so we've we've already we've established there's a bit of a time difference. Um, because where are you, Vanessa? I mean, I'm up a mountain in Colombia in the middle of nothing. <laughs> wow, amazing! So adventure is just the perfect word to talk about. Before we literally dive into uh everything to do with your adventures, um, what does the word adventure mean to you, Vanessa? The first thing I guess it sums up is bravery. It's just the willing to just let go of something else, maybe fear, maybe nervousness, maybe doubt or anything, and just to leap ahead into something. You don't know what it is, trusting that something's going to come and catch you and discover you and find you, maybe even break you down, um, put you in a dark room, whatever it is. It's just that movement from one secure space to the next one. And you could even have that in your bedroom, I think. (laughs) That's really exciting because... Often when we think about adventure, you don't think about kind of dark spaces and the fear, but actually that's as much of an adventure as diving into something that you know is going to work and kind of be positive, isn't it, I think? Sure, I think it's just proof of life, proof that you're a human, proof that you can have compassion to someone else if it throws you into a a darker bit. And and that's just gold. I mean, the, the light it's wonderful it's joyful it's great to feel like wow you know what a great monkey in a tree but then to be like wow look at this bit of my humanity you know I've got this rage that's coming up or I've got this irritation or I've got this sadness I've lost something is also proof of love or or something um I don't know I I do feel like it's often painted as gloom and doom when you've got anxiety and I've got anxiety and I've got discomfort you know medicate you know and I'm all for medication for sure we're chemical beings as well but I think we do it too quick. And it's like, well, first of all, is it saying something? Is the fact that you're uncomfortable in potentially a setting that's really great and you should be feeling great, but actually I feel uncom- discomfort. It's like to listen to that is everything is a voice and a tool and a navigator. And, and I think it's a, a real blessing that we have these things in our own bodies that say, not for you, Vanessa. And I've had that so many times in my life when I'm in a context of a great life and it looks like, and all of a sudden there's something that just feels discomfort and I'm learning to listen to it at every stage of things I go through. Like, why? Because my eyes tell me everything's fine and it's like that there's something ahead. You just don't see it and your body's telling you. And so that's an adventure just to feel anxiety and and something that's not quite right and be like, I think there's something new ahead and to trust it a bit, of course, you know, our emotions are a bit like whirlwind wild things that we shouldn't always trust fully because otherwise we'd be like a Colombian telenovela where everyone's just, ah, cha, cha. <laughs> 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 and, you, know, you know, there's not so much wisdom in it, I guess. So it's a mixture of listening to it and also, you know, putting it on the passenger seat and, you know, I'm still driving here, but you know, thanks for your input to say, you know, I think there's a, a stream and a mountain and a lake over on the left there. Because the one on the right that you're going to just doesn't feel good. <laughs> yeah, the, it's the noticing, isn't it? The noticing and maybe the accepting a little bit. So you're talking about anxiety and it's accepting it and saying, okay, you're here. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to work together? What are you going to teach me? How am I going to let you move me forward? Rather than, oh my goodness, you're here. Get out, get out, quick. It, 
it's befriending um, befriending all of the feelings that come up in us and not saying oh my god I've got a, an issue with anxiety I've got an issue with that I've got a problem and we need to put a word problem on it what about I've got a friend called fear that's trying to protect me from death but sometimes I just tell it it's all right fear I know you're here to look after me but I've got this and yeah. I know you've been giving them names <laughs> I'm a bit I'm a big namer absolutely um, yeah we had um, a brilliant guest called um Lucy Kate Newland we talked about the word talk it was an absolutely inspirational episode but she has um someone in her life called anxiety girl and she will talk to anxiety girl when when she tries to cause Lucy Kate problems and you know they kind of try and work things through together and I think naming it is can be really quite powerful can't it I know as a teacher um, and as a supply teacher even more importantly if you knew the name of the challenging kid of the kid that was going to cause you trouble suddenly that kid didn't have so much power because you could say right well I'm going to go and tell on you Peter Michael um, I'm going to go next door and Peter Michael suddenly like "Uh oh (laughs) Because it's got a a name. This I like what you said. It it re- removes power somehow, and it just kind of brings you in a clang together. And like, okay, these chemicals, you know, whatever, whoever I am now, I'm probably not going to be able to change the majority of it. There's things I tweak, but I've had a whole load of years and experiences, and you know, what do they say? Zero to eighteen months is a hardwiring time, and things. And so I'm like, okay, I come as this, and there's so many benefits to. The fact that I am a huge introvert, even though I don't come across it at all, but it's because I've had to force myself out, otherwise mm. I won't see the world. But that introvert side is 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 an unbalanced. It's very unbalanced. Like I, I was living in wardrobes. Whenever a human came, I would hide in a wardrobe. I wouldn't use my voice for many years. But my parents thought, you know, maybe some, something's a bit strange. Right. I would play it out on the piano. And so that side of me is not going to go right I'm not going to suddenly turn into a big you know wah, natural extrovert even though I know I'm faking it very well it's not <laughs> fake. Anymore. It's, it's merged but I gave that girl a name and I called her cave girl okay I don't need to use that anymore but in the beginning if I would go into a social setting I'm like cave girl is wanting to come out and rob me back into the cave and just stay in here you're safe here you're fine here is your identity and that was a big one like you are cave girl and it's like come on now I, I want to move into someone else now and you know it's all right when I go out and just having that conversation I haven't talked to cave girl in a long time now because I don't need her anymore but to give her a name yeah and that side of me um really helped me just dialogue and and not punish and we've got enough self-punishing things you know like even just yesterday I, I all I managed to do was make some scones and clean the house a bit and I was just you know throwing castigando as they say just so we have not done nothing today and that guilt trip that you give yourselves like that's just bad enough that we do that to ourselves let alone when we get a bit of fear or that we're nervous or like just because you feel fear doesn't mean you are fear and you know I get every time I'm about to get on stage I'm like oh my god what's wrong with me why am I like nearly throwing up and like blah, blah, blah. no 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 it's just It's just something from our wiring, from our past, I don't know, that's just cropping up saying, this happened once before, Uh, it might happen again. It's like, no, you just got to calm it down and, you know, use a bit of wisdom. Or as they say here, the the first brain is in the stomach, in the instinct, in the gut. The second one is in the heart and the third one is in the brain. So is that like, is that that kind of quite a Colombian ethos? I think I'm, I'm, I know, I think it's from some indigenous tribe yeah. there's so many here. yeah but uh I think it might be the ones from here because here on this mountain it's it's a sacred mountain that I've landed onto it's um the Kogi tribe um the there's a there's a documentary they did about it called Aluna uh there's um the Tyrona tribe was the main one they split into Kogis, Ayurwakos, Weewas and another one which have lost you know gone somewhere else now mm. and so these spiritual original indigenous beings are so advanced you think that they're the old ancient and the way they talk about cause the cosmos mixed with gravity mixed with this mixed with the galactical things mixed with nature uh you know they say their bible is nature and they study nature and they watch how the bird does that and that's their wisdom and they they're incredible um to just listen to and so i'm on their mountain they're much higher up and um and so you hear you know, a lot of the wisdom gets trickled down <laughs> to the village, to the village people. <laughs> yeah, I'm somewhere in the middle. 
and um yeah i think it's it's a it's it's not even a a spoken thing it's just a lived thing that people follow their instincts more and there's a lot of animals here and that's how animals are and you know sniff and feel and like sense and then the mind is a bit on the well, I don't know for people that have come from the city it's still there but it is it's lesser than it is when I was over in London and Brighton and Bradford where that drove everything and it and it did stress me out and I didn't realize how much it did until trying to readjust my hearts my yeah. brains you know stomach the heart and the head. yeah not so me, so on that just let's wind back a little bit V because because it has been a total adventure and I love the way you just say I landed on this mountain how how did you land on a mountain because the last time I saw you was in inner city Bradford <laughs> we had um been doing some music together a fantastic an adventure in itself um but now you're not in Bradford you are now on a mountain in Colombia so how <laughs> Tell us about that adventure because, oh my goodness, like what an adventure. And you're not just on a mountain, are you, V? You're on a mountain in a house that you have built yourself. I am oh, indeed. What a big change. Now you say it like that. This is what's so nice about older friends that you've had a lot of time together and you've had those years in Bradford where we were writing your musical, your amazing musical. Uh, and when I think of that, Vanessa, goodness me, yeah, now I'm living in my own house that I drew on a piece of paper and got some people to make it. And now I'm here in the middle of this. I'm sorry about the bugs that are coming out now, the chicharas, uh, cicadas are being born. And so they're quite loud. Oh, um, that, that's a beautiful, you know, people pay to have that noise on their phone, don't they, to let them go to sleep. So could we just turn them up a little bit and then we'll stop talking. <laughs> we'll just let people listen to the chicadas. <laughs> <laughs> just being born and they get really happy about it and it's just an f sharp all day so it's f sharp <laughs> why, why wouldn't you be happy when you've just been born that's that's a fantastic way to celebrate <laughs> <laughs> I, I know i'm not answering your question from before but this is what i'm now feeling when you are stuck in the middle of a jungly mountain i don't have people around me i just have these animals and they're so curious and and they're, they're happy and and they're like they like simple things and that leaks onto me a bit yeah and she, they have their own songs don't they and their own stories their own ad adventures and things I mean I love when people animate inanimate objects and give them their own adventures and their own stories and things like that and actually um, as we speak it's going to be world book day tomorrow for a lot of people in in the UK and um, well and across the world and uh all the stories that have been written about the adventures of things that otherwise you wouldn't think about. And you've had all this opportunity to, to listen to those sounds and think about those adventures because you've got this headspace, haven't you? That's yeah, and, been created. And the of, of like, you think, yes, something just going, I'm born. <laughs> <laughs> and I just hear that resonate around the whole mountain, this joy of being born. And maybe they'll make a sound when they die and they'll just equally make a beautiful sound. And here every morning I see death. I see butterflies that didn't quite make it out of the window. So it was just their time to go. And that's not um, any different to the sound of being born. It's, it's really strange, the perspective of being around so much nature. You watch a leaf crumble and then fall and then, and then that helps the root of the tree to grow. And um, there's no positive and, and no good and bad. It's It's all just a cycle here and a spiral, which... What an interesting, that's an interesting. I, sorry, I should, way. should I answer? <laughs> <laughs> We're on an adventure. I'm, I, I love, I love the, I mean, the whole idea of the race podcast is it's very much free flow. So at some point we'll answer the question, but I, I'm actually really loving talking about the, <laughs> the noises. And the, I, I do just want to, that, that idea that death sounds the same as life and there's no negative and positive. I mean, for so many people, that is an adventure in itself. Really fascinating talking about the kind of life and death thing. But if you will, yeah, tell us a little bit about this adventure from um, from where I knew you to where you are now. Yeah, this is, I feel I've not particularly made any concrete decisions or planned or made a five-year plan, but I just stepped ahead 
into curiosity and wonder, I think. I know I sound like a Peter Pan kid, but I You I sound I like an album, Vanessa Ferrero, which is why you are such an amazing lyricist and singer. Everything you say, I'm thinking, I need to write a song about that. No, I need to write a song about that. <laughs> You know what they are lyrics are the hardest bit <laughs> um but, but yeah it's just been um I'm not very good at planning and I'm not very good at deciding and I've never been good at drawing doing the outline I'm very good at coloring in but to do the box terrifies me and so I think life maybe knows that about me I think life will you know channel through each person how they are maybe for a logical being they will give them the signs and the ways they need but for me mine was like uh I think, oh goodness, I don't even know how to condense this, Bradford to Columbia. Well, um, uh, <laughs> I'm going to jump from Bradford to Brighton, where I eventually moved at the time I was married. Uh, I think you knew me when I had my really great partner, Dan. Uh, we got married very young, uh, like 19, in the church. We had we were raised in a church. And, um, and I actually had a, a moment where I'm like, I everything that I believe, like I was raised in this belief, I didn't pick myself, I was just raised into it. And I just questioned everything about my culture, my beliefs, the way I was. And I thought it's not mine unless I've chosen it and lived it and carved my way through to it. So I'm just going to detox. And I decided to do a Christian detox, mm. um, like specifically would just attack basically or just just burn everything that I thought you know healing or or my relationship with Jesus the, the fact that I feel this and know this and do you really know it and so everything got put through a fire mm. so intensely that I thought I would come out um a stronger Christian mm. but actually it turned me atheist and I was really I, I've not stayed there don't worry <laughs> uh I, I I burnt everything right down to rationality and didn't believe in love, particularly outside of the biological use of it to procreate and everything. Mm. And everything kind of came down to a, re uh, a reduced, but a bit solid form, which I really needed to have lived. And then um, out of that, then I ended up springing into other things. And now my, my faith is very unique and I don't even know how I'd explain it, but it's, it's so me and it's so, it got burnt all the way and then what I've picked and experienced since then is um is just magical for me mm -hmm. but in that transition time of burning everything away Vanessa got burnt away as well the old one mm -hmm. and um, because you know you change your belief system you change everything um and so Dan my partner at the time saw all of that happening and you know was was worried but also happy to see me kind of grow and know myself more um and at one point we got to a stage where we couldn't, you know, I believe marriage is a commitment to change together. Mm. And we got to a point where it's like, if we stay together, trying to change together, we're so going in different growth directions. And I was becoming a little bit wilder, I guess. And Dan was becoming in another direction. He was just very Dan. And he was like, you know, just take the spare room and try, do what you like with it. You know, mm. express yourself. Oh, it's got a trumpet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so try express yourself um in this bedroom see what comes out and and I started wearing skirts which I never did before and just dressing a bit more funny and putting plants everywhere and listening to different music collecting different things and he was like wow you're, you're really becoming a bit more coherent in who I actually think you are and he started becoming something else and we almost transcended our vows in saying, I love you so much that I'm not going to possess you or try and keep you on my path. I'm going to love you so much that I'm going to release you onto your own to wow. become fully you and I support you. You know, every week we decided to meet up or more than once a week, you know, giving each other enough space. And eventually he helped me move out into another flat. It was a real cheap, old, ugly flat, but I needed to have lived that bit of my life. Mm -hmm. And we did it in tears, like, it's really painful to separate from someone that's a great relationship and great partner and we laughed a lot and we had a studio together we had a band together we had a lot together and it was a great relationship but I didn't know myself and I'd not evolved and not walked anything of my own path and he knew that that above everything is the most important thing for anyone to have in your life to really know yourself and you know we come into the world alone we go out alone and you've got to be all right with yourself on your own mm. So he helped me move out into my flat and, and we would make sure to catch up with each other every few days. And 
we were both just like, I'd never known that I could be so happy about this. Or I discovered this and like, oh, I think I can, I can see that in you. And we just saw each other grow. It was a two year process coming out of that. Um, the most, we had a lot of love in the marriage, but there was even more love at the end. Mm, and Wow. And then, wow. Yeah. And I know that separating and divorce and, and, um it's got a taboo of it's got a it's got an identity of you know it's not worked it's failed it's it's horrible it's just a disaster it's like actually some relationships it's more the next level of growth to be like let's uh you know let's lose our possessiveness of each other and our security and we had so much security and go go for it go for it and and now he's got a partner and a baby and he's so living his damn life and he they stay in touch with me and they show me pictures and I'm so happy when I see them both because I knew I couldn't be the woman ahead of Dan's path and he couldn't be the man ahead of my path. Um, you know, at the moment, I've just got a little wolf, <laughs> a little wolf dog and I'm, a partner isn't as important to me as it was me getting to know who I am, where I want to be, what I want to do, what I think, what I feel and all of that and I've got that now and that's thanks to Dan for releasing me and I released him and um it that that's why I left Bradford and uh we were both in Brighton at the time trying to make a new start after working things out and and I was just I had this really weird thing actually I was I was gigging around Brighton at the time and that was new for me to sing was new because I'd never used my voice before and that was one of the things I was learning about myself like I think mm. I think I want to I just want to be in a band and play the piano and so I was I was working on that going out to open mic nights and exercising that new thing about me and I remember coming down the steps to my house in Brighton that I had with Dan and this like I cannot I can only describe it as like a fingerprint input on my flesh and bones and everything that said this is not your life anymore and I was like yeah, instantly old Christian days. I rebuke that. I'm against that. I don't, no, no, no. That's the devil's voice. And it was just like literally all kinds of cogs and things just got re collaborated on me as I was just walking down the steps with my guitar. And since then I couldn't like build the house together. I was trying to like lift the curtain pole and my arms felt heavy and I started getting ill. I started losing my hair and getting stomach ulcers because I was not listening to this change that was happening in me. And, um, you know, told Dan all about it and and he was great and just like, okay, well, explore it. Go, you know, see, let's, you know, let's create freedom here and see see what happens. And so, so that fingerprint moment came back. I know there's a lot of story to fill in between, but it came back when I was here in Colombia. I've got a motorbike, mm. I've got a miniature wolf and I had a machete on my back and a churango on the other. And I was wow. on my motorbike <laughs> through these mountain trails and I looked at the, the ocean view from the side and I was on my way to my own bit of land that I bought here building I had some building materials on my back and Ginger my dog was running alongside me and all of a sudden the same fingerprint input boosh, boom just slapped itself all over my existence and then it said this is your life and I'd totally forgotten the first this is not your life and I was like something out there new <laughs> yeah and it was you know, it's actually against everything I valued and believed and marriage and, and you know, in the Bible and everything I believed in that and my values in that were really strong. And so it's really hard for me to be like, that was the voice of God or the universe. I don't know what it was, but it was definitely a soul path kind of feeling mm. that said, like, you're on a different one now. And then it showed me when I'm living this life, that's where I was taking you, you know, and that maybe is me, maybe is something external. I just still don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but the uh, yeah that that huge change did happen um and the reason it happened was just I guess bravery mm. and I said that's adventure um curiosity freedom a loving partner that let me and support me and and I lost a lot of friends in that time because they didn't understand who I was or what I was becoming and they thought you know I'd gone against the church and so it was Jesus punishing me or something it's like no I totally feel accompanied by light and goodness and and my version of of church god spirituality jesus all of that was all in the backpack mm. <laughs> and i and i just walked and i was on this like three-legged sofa in a moldy room crying in happiness because i was now on my path and that was the beginning of my path on that moldy gray three-legged sofa <laughs> wow and 
just was, and that was it. That was the beginning. It was that sofa, and now it's here in a most I can't believe just this mountain house that I've I drew and it's built. I just drew out of a silly drawing in on that moldy gray sofa. I was like, I can't quite imagine myself here as a 50, 60 year old. So where would I be? But don't dream rationally. Dream like a kid. And so that's where the next phase came of drawing my dream out. What an incredible woman Vanessa is. Did you know that the music at the beginning and end of the podcast was written by me? And now I'm offering that service to other businesses and podcast users. I can write you a jingle that will give you a confident and creative brand identity. If you or someone you know might like that service, please get in touch on www.raiseforall.com or find us on our socials. Back to the episode. Wow, just that phrase, drawing your dream out. I think, I mean, there's so much to delve into, um, but the the adventure that Dan went on as well in releasing you kind of both and allowing you to have that adventure is such freedom, isn't it? I'm just, as I said, one of the reasons I really wanted to talk to you as it's International Women's Day coming up um, you know, next week. And when it comes to inspiring women and women who carve their own path and draw their own houses and build them and things like that, you're, you know, right up there. Um, tell us a little bit about the practicality of that, Vanessa. How, so you drew on a napkin and now you live in the house. <laughs> did anything happen in the middle <laughs> or did it just kind of arrive? <laughs> because to be quite honest with you, your story is so magical that if you said to me, well, the drawing just lifted itself off the napkin <laughs> and the house arrived on the mountain, I'd go, of course it did. <laughs> <laughs> life, life has just shown me some magical things, not quite like that, but magical things. <laughs> In exchange for my, what I would call ridiculous, ridiculousness, I'm, like, I'm just going to take the ridiculous <laughs> option. <laughs> I'm not taking the logical one because I guess, you know what, I think at the end of life with Dan, at the end of life with church and losing what I thought was God and thought was Jesus, but obviously they were my old conceptions of that. Um, I died in a way and I just didn't care about making mistakes anymore because I'd lost everything. And so I was like, I'm just going to do something silly. And so, I, yeah, I drew these houses with butterfly wing roofs. And so I'm like, I'm going to make the roof out of butterfly wing. I don't want to make it out of wood. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have a rope swing bridge with a donkey and a monkey hanging off it. And, and I would just draw like a kid. And um, and in exchange, things started coming towards me. And I think, I don't know what it is. Maybe the universe likes my stories. And, and it's all a story in a storybook. And it's like, well, that person's doing something a bit interesting. You know, it's a bit of a twist in the road. Let's uh, let's like throw a few chips over that direction. And I, it's really what it felt happened. That drawing, I then put it away and forgot about it. I thought I was just having a silly night. And then, um, uh, oh, oh, so many practicalities. But mm -hmm. basically a friend had to go back to Colombia and she forced me to go back with her and um, I don't actually I'd actually already had a return flight I'd, I'd go there a lot because I'm half Colombian and my family's there but didn't particularly feel a connection to there um, I wasn't going to take my return flight back to Colombia until my friend forced me to do it like you're coming with me I haven't been back in like 25 years da 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 I go, fine I'll go and do a little Colombian tour whilst I'm there you know make mm -hmm. make something up I'd released a record that was a little bit half Colombian, half English kind of record. I thought, okay, I'll go tour around Colombia for a month and end it in a place called Minca, which is like this mountain village where I've actually ended up um, because it's just nice and it's very green. And, um, you know, at the end of a tour around cities, it'd be nice to just relax for a week or two. So I came here and um, and that time I put an offer in on a little flat in Brighton, a little, little, little <laughs> flat. It's all they could afford am I right and in you thinking would... most things will be little little compared to what you're living in right now though I mean nothing's going to compare to it is it 
<laughs> oh, the money, the, the money income, the income of an artist to get a house in Brighton was just like there was no kitchen. Yeah. I couldn't have got a piano through the door. Uh, the stairs were like elf stairs, which you know I like elves and fairies, but I don't like <laughs> don't want to piano. live in an elf. Stairs. No, no, I was so happy. I was like, great, you know, ownership. You get to have something of your own. That's brilliant. Yeah. You know, what a luxury. And um, whilst I was on the on in Minka when I finished the tour. Um, I was like, oh, I like this place. It's nice. I'll hang out for maybe an extra week. Yeah. And then I got a phone call from Brighton saying, your house has fallen through. Someone's come along with a cash offer. You won't get it. And you probably won't get another house in England because you're an artist. The, the income is up and down all the time. I've got no boss. I've got no references. Mm. You can probably get a buy to let, but with your deposit, probably not much. So I was like, can't even live in my own country. Right, well should I just think a bit differently? And I suddenly remembered that drawing while I was on that three-legged sofa, like, where could I, you know, if I've got, if I'm so bad in England, you know, like my income is so low and I can't do not many options, where would that little piece of paper take me? And I'm like, in the middle of this mountain, which has got so much land and, and a lot of people here do come and they just create a sustainable life here. So I'm like, just come out of the box of it, Vanessa, and have a walk around. And um, so I was like, all right, if I could do the silly dreaming again, silly dreaming, like you could have any bit of this mount, patch of mountain land, including if it belongs to someone else, like if it's a hostel or a business, that is included in dreaming. If it, if it means living in the sky, great, you know, have it all. Where would it be? And I went all around the mountain. Um, COVID had just started at that point. So it was a ghost town and there was no one around and I didn't really have much to do. So I thought, I'm just going to just go around all of the areas here, up and down, left and right. And I kept coming back to this place, which was a project called the Toy Library or La Ludoteca. Mm. And um, the, the entrance had some tires and it's kind of curved and there's bamboos hiding over it. And I was like, that's just, I keep getting drawn to that entrance. It's so nice. And it's about 15 minutes walk from the village and it's flat and you've got the big view. And this isn't that, that's the perfect place. And, and, um, I was like, I'm just going to be silly again. You know, silly dreaming comes with silly acting sometimes. And so you get in touch with the person whose side of the mountain it is and like, hi, I've just seen your project. Are you selling it? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, no. And also this is conservation zone that we don't sell. Like just no go. It, it's been conservation for seven years. It's just a project for, for some mud hut teaching thing. No, 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 there's a proper word for that. Bioconstruction. There we go. Not much. <laughs> no, much, <laughs> much hut teaching thing is, is so much, so much more professional than bio, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, so I was like, well, fair enough. You know, anyway, I tried. And then um, I think with pandemic, they were saying, you know, wherever you are in the world, you're going to have to stay for a few months because this is getting bad. And so I was like, oh, God, I probably should go back to England, you know, be with the family or something, even though I've got a house that's fallen through, blah, I don't know. And then I just felt that the same kind of voice that said, wherever you go, I go. You know, I, and for some people, it could be God, it could be Buddha, it could be the universe, it could be yourself, it could be your peace. But for me, I guess it felt a universal comforting of like, you could be in England for pandemic or whatever, wherever you want to go, I'll go. And I just felt, I like it here in Minka. I think I'll stick around. And so I'm like, fine, we're sticking around. And I just felt so much peace. My parents weren't. And so I told them, right, I'm going to stay here for four months, mum and dad. Like, so we've got a little, you know, they're not like, when is she coming? When, when, when? It's like, no, four months and I'll be back then. And uh, so like, fine. And so in that four months, I thought I'll really open up to this idea of, of living here and explored it a bit more. I just couldn't stop thinking about the Ludotheca and like, what a shame. I'll have to go for second best. And um, I ended up finding a bit of land a bit further along and tried getting a deal with that. But it was, um, ended up, by the way, the four months turned into two years. <laughs> of course, <laughs> as it all so did with get, the pandemic. <laughs> and then, yeah, I couldn't get out of the village. They literally closed the, the road off. Um, no one could get in or out. Oh, wow. which I always loved and and I got to learn the community here and um a lot of people struggled with money and so they did trades like some people were growing lettuce and so they would trade it for tomatoes and some people would trade it for a massage or something I, was like, I like this kind of living it's a bit different um and there's people from all around the world that have just landed here and have stories and I thought I, I feel so accompanied here I guess in Brighton around the families that are on the beach every Sunday in their prams. I was like, oh, I do struggle a bit. Um, 
whereas here everyone's a little bit strange and different and trying something new and there's also families and there's also you know more logical beings but there's just such a big mix that I felt accompanied and thought, I like it here so I'm really going to try and go for it and then um, tried with one bit of land and just wasn't happening eventually I let it go and I thought oh, fine I don't know what else to do with the, the the money that I'd actually taken out of Dan's house out of the savings we had of the Brighton house mm. I wanted to put it somewhere before I spent it on chocolate and stuff <laughs> That is a really? lot of chocolate. I mean, I know you're in Colombia, but that's a lot of chocolate. <laughs> I, I, I can surprise you. <laughs> so I know myself. I go really put this into somewhere where I want to live. I'm like, is it Minka? Why is this not happening? And so I let it all go. And I was just like, fine. I just surrender it all. I've been trying, just letting it go. And then I think it was that week. Well, I'd actually lost my phone and everything, you know, talking about letting it go. I'd lost everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it happened. So no one could contact me. And someone had gone through the village, like this accountant woman, looking for me. Like, so I'm looking for a girl called Vanessa. She's like British Colombian, Colombian British girl, looking for land. And the person that she'd asked was one of my closest friends in the village who I was living with. And she goes, oh, yeah, I live with her. Like, she's got no phone, no contact, but I can ring the neighbor and tell her to come out. Yeah, do it. Okay. Hey, Vanessa, there's a lady here that's looking to speak to you about land. Um, come out. And I was like, okay. So I came out of my cabin and met this woman for lunch and she goes ah someone told me that you're looking for land around that side of the mountain um and there's a project that was called the toy library la ludoteca that is wow. for sale and this is two years later wow. and i'm like this is the pe- patch of land that i was just like i feel so drawn to that and i'm like I, I don't believe you i tried that two years ago i got in touch with the owner phil and everything and da 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 and they're like yeah but pandemic has been a bit tough for <clears throat> for them there's a baby in the family so they need to support that and they have to sell one bit of land in their 50 hectares they have which is like 150 acres almost the only bit of that whole conservation area is this one bit which they call la ludoteca that just happened a few years ago to be taken out of the state of the what do they call it disinglobar so taken out of because like the whole heck the whole lot plot the whole plot it's difficult to separate bits but this one bit was the one that was separated and so they're like that's now going for sale. I was wow. like, I don't believe it. Uh-huh. Price, the price was double what I had. And I was like, oh, sorry. I thought it was mine. I just, I don't have that. And um, the lady was like, let me, let, let me do something. Let me, I'll come back to you. She goes, what have you got? I goes, God, with land and construction budget, all I've got is this amount. And so she, which was, um, I think with their sale, well, I can't remember. I think it was 20 it's a bit, bit more expensive than the rest of the land here, but 20 grand, maybe 18 grand. This is for three he- three acres. Wow. And yeah, and this is the more expensive side of the mountain because it's like <laughs> so close to the view. And that was the maximum that I had. And so she was like, let me see. Meanwhile, I hear of a famous Colombian actress has come across and found that this land is for sale and offers the full price, which was I can't remember, nearly double. Mm. And the guy rejected it. So I'm like, well, he's not going to accept me. I've got half. Anyway, the woman rings back and she goes, yeah, you've got it. I was like, oh, wait, 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 I don't understand. Because the actress just got rejected for double for offering double price. And they go, for some reason, he wants you to have it. I don't know why. I've never met the guy. And she was like, do you want to meet next week? We'll sign the papers and it's all yours. I was still oh. in disbelief. Just like, oh, does goodness. not make any sense. Went down to the registry office in a week and I'm just signing papers with a with face <laughs> like... And he starts taking pictures and he's like, that's the paper. You've just signed it. You've become a mum of the land. And I was like, oh my God, this is the easiest thing in the world. So we're all celebrating. And I looked at the date of um, the date that this land had been taken away from the state, like when it became independent. Yeah. And it was 1983, my birth year as well. And so I was like, look at that. We're wow. twinned. <laughs> wow. I just knew this was this was my land inside. So even before I really looked at it, um, that flowed so easily, so hilariously, magically that I I don't try. I, I I don't do all this manifesting. I don't read the books. I don't know about all the the, the talk that they talk about. You know, you got to put clear. You got to be clear about this, and you got to do mood boards. And I don't know about that. I just uh, I just I'm I'm, a, I'm ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> believe the silly thing and so um somehow that that pulled off and and for some reason I'm now here and I planted 300 trees as soon as I got here because this side of the mountain they cut it all down for cattle 
really mm. destroyed the land so I instantly felt like really sad for the land and tried to recuperate it um and I've become a mum of 300 endangered tree forest here and then I built a, a house in the middle of it where I get to live with my little mini wolf and hopefully a little studio space to make music and I'm in the middle of, like if I, I don't know if I can probably not but oh just, my goodness so being, obviously we're just on audio but I can just see out of the window the most lush, amazing mountains and banana plants. Is that a banana plant? Yeah, there's a banana and there's the ocean is there. It's, oh, I don't want to take too Oh, my right. goodness. But there is nothing. I, I have no, no one around. That's incredible. <laughs> and then so um, that worked out well. Um, and i um, just really grateful. So that's how I got here. I guess that's a condensed version of <laughs> that. That, I mean, wow. Yeah, that's... I mean, that just is an adventure, isn't it? That's a huge adventure. Um, and you've had someone visit you recently who will be sharing the adventure with us at some point. Tell us a little bit about your your English visitor that came, was it last week, to do some filming yeah. with you? So this is thanks to Sarah Mumford, who might be listening. She is an amazing friend, the most supportive person in the world, and she yeah. would always say, there's a TV show called New Lives in the Wild, Ben Fogel's New Lives in the Wild. You should get in touch. She said it various times, because that's what I usually need, like various times. Got in touch with the team and um, they're like, yeah, great. Well, come on, you know, a couple of months, we'll be there. And I'm like, oh my God, is that really happening? And I didn't believe it until Ben Fogel himself was in, in the village and I went to pick him, pick him up on my motorbike, brought him wow. here. We gave Sarah a ring on the phone. Hey, Sarah, look, who's here? <laughs> and um we did a show two weeks they filmed here ben stayed um helped water the plants and um just got to share the land here and they were really happy i had a i just couldn't believe it i'm there on my little terrace that i built on my napkin you know design on napkin and i'm watching these three trucks of cameras leave the, oh, my man. little mountain trail road and i'm just looking at like Life is just so good. I know, isn't you know? There's difficult times. There'll be difficult times. But right now, I'm in a sat on my terrace watching the sunset with these three trucks full of like fancy cameras and Ben Fogel leaving after a first day of filming. And there's me, little Vanessa, with little Ginger, the wolf here. I just I'm enjoying the taste of life so much right now. Uh, I've had a difficult time recently. My dog had a fatal disease and she's um, de on death's door for a couple of weeks. And um, just to try and balance the story out. So it's not always up <laughs> you feel like <laughs> I, feel, I feel bad for always saying that it's wonderful because uh, just to balance it out, there's, there's hard stuff and, you know, families, friends and all of that. But in that moment of when they were here it was one of the highest, like most amazing times. Everything flowed. They were just like, this is just magical. And They've not, they told me that it was one of the most fluid shoots they've ever had. They've never had a shoot where everything's just flowed so well. And, uh, you know, there was tears and joy and happiness and everything in these two weeks. So that's going to go out. I, I have no idea. A few months, takes two wow. months to edit. Yeah. Then it'll go out. So I'm like, God, they found me. So I could still keep having my city connections and city life whilst I'm in the middle of absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. That's my next level of trust now is that. I am here and I'm away from the gig scene, the musician scene, the directors, the movies, which is my side of life. I'm a composer yeah. for film and television and new recent singer songwriter. And here amongst the toucans and things, there's not so much of a buzz in that sense. <laughs> I don't know. I think the insects buzz things. quite a lot, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Different Definitely buzz. <laughs> Rather than you think you're on the polls and you got all the social media going. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I am a creature of that side as well. And so I'm trying to figure out, you know, I think a lot of people move out to nature and become, uh, how do you say, campesinos, like uh, land workers or you know, yeah, permaculture yeah. people. Yeah. And I tried for the first year, got machete wounds and everything. And partway through it, just watching these brilliant pan campesinos here, they're able to just do a machete wipe in two minutes and I'm still there 10 minutes later. And <laughs> I, I just like, I didn't Maybe not like your skill not... set. <laughs> <laughs> you can thought, put it like... on your CV. Amazing production artist, vocalist, uh, jingle writer, um, broadcaster and machete user. 
<laughs> mediocre machete. <laughs> That's- can you I imagine well them not- saying, I'm sorry, you didn't get the job because you're not very good at using a machete. <laughs> no. I don't, and I, I'm like, I can, I contributed to cleaning and things, but I'm, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> and it makes me think like, okay, I don't like not being good at something. Everyone's good at something. Like it could, it could be making peanut butter. Uh, and it, you got to have that in your life because it makes you feel good about yourself. And I was in a year of being a campesina, mm. um, you know, working the land and trying to grow things and not really realizing that that plant needed shade. And I'm like, I don't think it's, it's a, it's a part of me, but it's not all of me. And so somehow I need to find out how to be that other Vanessa, the the studio, the gig person in the middle of nothing. And that is my next level of, of trust and, and trusting that life will come to me. <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous to say that life will come to me in the middle of absolutely nothing. And then look what happened with Ben Fogler. The team came here and and things are happening and I'm meeting people here and potential band girls and everything is now on the internet so I could maybe record and and it's cheaper to live here so paying for a flight to maybe Canada to do a tour there or coming back to England to tour there yeah. I have options that are now coming back but that wasn't there in the beginning of my planning to move to a sacred mountain in Colombia <laughs> I did not think and at no point I've had a farewell party at no point I've told my parents I'm moving to Colombia because I've just stepped into it and I think they now are like oh you're you're there and I'm like yeah you're not really coming yeah. back at the moment <laughs> yeah guys but <laughs> and building a house is it's fairly not I don't want to use the word final but it's fairly c- yeah. concrete although I know concrete. it's not made out of Literally. concrete it's made out of wood but <laughs> yeah you know and you're saying well I might be back soon I just happened to have built a house so maybe not that <laughs> soon <laughs> I'm just not thinking ahead at all it's just like it seems like a nice thing to do right now you know I've got luckily you know got a bit of money not enough for England but enough here to build a house and I'm like the pandemic what else am I going to do it feels like a nice story to have in a chapter rather than saving it or doing something normal it's like let's just go and make a nice story I do so- love it it's the middle of the, um, the pandemic what else am I meant to do I would say that the majority of people in the world <laughs> didn't think I'll build my own house I think a lot of people thought I'll watch a nice box set on Netflix (laughs) (laughs) that's uh yeah literally worlds apart but I mean the thing is V at the end of the day yeah that this whole interview could have been very different because you could have said I was in Bradford and I wasn't sure what my my future held and um we we finished the marriage and I stayed in Brighton and I just carried on with life. And you didn't do that. You you embraced all the opportunities that life was giving you. And that is you, as you said, stepping into your curiosity, which I love, stepping into your adventure. But not everybody does that. So just um, we always have a little challenge on the podcast so I do want to just say to those people listening and I'm sure that you're as enthralled as I am with all this amazing uh, things that Vanessa is saying but maybe it's not the right time for you to go into a different country and build your own house but what might your adventure be just have a, a think about what um what life is kind of saying to you at the moment if you believe in God what God is saying to you what your heart is saying to you is your adventure embracing emotions that we talked about right at the top of the podcast is it speaking to someone that you really didn't dare speak to when we're celebrating International Women's Day is it about standing up and saying no more I'm not doing this I need to make a break and become my own person we've talked about a lot of different levels of adventure. So what is your level of adventure and how might this episode just make a little change in your life? Vanessa, this has been absolutely incredible. We come to the part of the podcast now, which is always my adventure, which I don't know if you know about this, but I always write an on the spot poem for every guest. Oh my goodness so um yeah I I was really excited about this interview until I remembered that there's not many words that rhyme with adventure <laughs> <laughs> denture 
<laughs> yeah. I'm not sure how I'm going to get the word dentures into this poem. <laughs> but I am just going to um, take a few seconds just to think about what I'm going to say. Adventure is a leap. It's a joy. It's an unknown quantity, a curiosity, the thing that says, let's do it anyway. Let's be ridiculous. Let's climb this mountain and build a house on it. Let's part ways in love. Let's set each other free to be. Let's listen to our souls. Let's dare to become whole. Let's listen. Let's leap. Let's go on an adventure. Hi. There you go. No rhyming at all and definitely no dentures. That's so nice to hear a bubble version <laughs> of many things lived. Wow, thank you, Carol. I just wanted to add as well, when, when you were encouraging people to say, what's your adventure? I used to look at the waves in Brighton a lot, the small ones and the big ones, and they'd always be different sizes. And I think it could be as small as like tasting the new brand of chili sauce. Mm -hmm. And that is like an adventure in your mouth. The fact that you can taste and experience and feel is, it might look like a small wave and maybe it'll in time be a big wave. But all of them is an adventure, no matter how big and small. Um, thank you for your words and for having me on. You're so welcome. You are such an inspiration. Thank you for daring to go on this adventure, which is now going to inspire so many people listening today. You're brilliant. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you for choosing to listen to the Raise podcast. We hope that we've raised your confidence and inspired your creativity. In order to keep sharing the love, please go onto your favourite music platform and give us a five-star rating. That helps us to be seen by a larger amount of people. Have a lovely week. Take care.